Hi. A month ago, I posted a preliminary sketch of an arrangement I was working on uh, based on We Three Kings. And the arrangement's been finished. I performed it this past weekend at the annual Allen Organ Christmas concert here in Octave Hall. And I'd like to share with you exactly how I put the whole arrangement together. But before I deconstruct it for you, uh, you might enjoy seeing the final result. And you can get to that video by clicking on the link that's shown on the screen here right now. After you've uh, seen that, come on back and I'll take the whole arrangement apart for you and show you how I did it. You might remember that the arrangement starts with sort of a thunderstorm. And that sound is one of the Genesis voices, thunder. And I've got it in the pedals. And as I move my feet up to the right and the pitch and the pitch increases. You can hear, hear thunder crashes and rain in the background. We're down here. I think it's a great way to start the arrangement with sort of a mysterious sound. And I envision the three wise men braving the elements as they come across the desert. And it's a very hostile environment. So that's why I chose that sound. I've also used that sound on occasion in Good Friday in church, and it really sets the, um, sets the stage for the emotion of the evening. So, okay, we're starting with a thunderstorm, and then a chime, which tells us a little bit about the urgency of the voyage, and then um, a soft combination of the warm pad and also the music box. And then I reach up and pull that chime sound into this sustain. On the choir manual, I'm using the sound of the choir. And I have that mapped to this portion of the keyboard where I'm going to play the melody at first. And then I move up to the grate where I've got all of these sounds coupled. And on the top octave of the keyboard, I've got a pan flute just, just from here up. And when we combine this and change the pedal registration, we get a wonderful ensemble of the choir sound, the flute, and also the other sounds that are mapped to this keyboard. And you'll notice that flute comes out here in the melody line. If I take the choir coupler off, you'll hear just what's on the grate, the strings, and now I add the swell coupler. Hear those bells in the background, and now I add the choir coupler, and you hear this pan flute taking over the melody line. On the choir manual, I have the I have the chimes just on that note. Below it, nothing. Above it, I have again the pan flute. And the reason I put it up here is because at the end I wanted to play the chimes again while I was sustaining with my left hand down here. And then I also wanted to be able to play just a little. a dissonant figure on that pan flute. And instead of coming down here, which I could have done, it was just more convenient to play it on the same keyboard up here with a chime. And uh, so I mapped it up there as well. OK, and after I'm done playing this portion, I come down here and 
sustain this. And the reason I'm holding that cord with the right hand now is because at the same time I move over into the console controller and pick a new file of Genesis voices. This changes all of the voices assigned to the various Genesis stops. And now I hit a piston, which changes some of the stops that are drawn. And instead of having that choir and uh, orchestra, now I have a piano sound here. I also have a piano in the pedal as well. The piano sound is actually up here on the swell, but I can bring it down to the grate with the swell to grate coupler, and I also have strings on the grate. So I combine the two of them, and by changing the volume pedals, I can get more piano or more strings as I want. And in this section, I start I start with more piano and then start to change the balance just by bringing up the great expression pedal and bringing in more strings. So now we're off to the races with the We Three Kings theme. And on the pedal, I have some pedal stops and also the piano coupled from the swell down to the pedal. And lastly, I've got a bass guitar sound down there as well. Well, this piece is in the key of D, and especially in the first half of the melody, the D pedal is almost a pedal point sustain. And so I have mapped to the D in the middle of the pedal board a snare drum. And I'm going to back, back and forth between my left foot and my right foot. And you'll notice that the pedal line is moving, but this snare drum is only available on one note. So my trick here is to hit the pedal so quickly that it fires the snare drum sound, but you never really hear the, the D sound, the D tone that's um, associated with it. So listen. So there we have the, the end of the first verse. Hit a piston. The piano's gone. And I have, I have a piano in the pedals that helps me play that big chord and makes it percussive. I'll go through the refrain. Now I hit a new piston, heavier strings, and I've got strings at the octave now too. In my first preset I had just eight foot strings, but on this one I've got eight and four. Makes it a little brighter, a little stronger, and... I've also got a choir in there. And on the first verse, I played repeated notes between the strings and the piano. On the second verse, I'm going to sustain this. So you can hear the choir coming through a little bit more. At the end of the chorus, 
uh, at the end of the verse, rather, I use this piston, which has a really percussive piano, and this, this quicker moving line benefits from the piano at four foot as well. And I can do that because Genesis voices couple at the octave with, um, with the couplers of the organ. It's so cool to have that versatility. I can have just the eight foot sound of the piano. And this, well, let's turn these strings off. You hear the eight foot sound and when I put on the swell to great four foot coupler, listen what happens. So I get the effect of playing octaves just with one finger. Add those strings back in and we get. Now I'm using the same trick of the chimes just on one note. Oops, sorry. And it's coupled up from the choir to here. Now you start to hear. That chime only happens when I rekey that D, and that's kind of cool. Now I've got chimes, I've got the strings, I've got the choir, and I'm doing that all with one hand, and at the same time, I'm using my right foot to play the snare drum. At the same time as I'm playing that with my left hand, I reach up here and play on the solo. A big distorted electric guitar, which I really have a lot of fun playing. And that is actually a combination of the same sound at octaves with one another. There's the four foot, there's the eight foot. Put them together and we get a really a nice bite to it and I detune them from one another by a few cents so it sort of choruses with one another. So now here. At the same time as I'm playing that. And then, of course, I can't help but um, I can't resist quoting a little J.S. Bach. Piano sound, and as I come down to this portion of the keyboard, I pull on the swell four to four, four foot coupler, and then I get the piano at eight foot and four foot. Uh, then I reach up and grab that distorted guitar and switch back down here to get the chimes and everything else. Add the guitar to that same line couple it down from the choir, I mean from the solo. And that's the end of the piece. Well, I know it's a lot to follow, but trust me, these Genesis voices give a degree of flexibility and latitude to mix and match them in a way that I've never been able to do with any MIDI module. And because they're resident on the organ and they respond to the organ couplers, you can get terrific layers of sound that are thicker and richer and, and have more components to them than uh, any traditional MIDI module attached to an organ. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at We Three Kings. I hope you enjoy the arrangement itself and check back. I'll post more as the year goes on of different arrangements that I'm working on and ways that I'm using fantastic new Genesis voices. <laughs>